Whether it's drugs, violence, peer pressure, or simply the stress of growing up in an increasingly demanding world, our kids face tough choices and challenges day in and day out. How they respond to these challenges can make or break their future. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and tonight, these young people from the Capital Region are here to change their lives and make a difference in our local schools. And it all starts right here, right now. Thanks to a cutting-edge concept, every student, every parent, teacher, or anyone wanting to dramatically improve their life should know about. It's called The Game, and it's all about winning at life. So my question to you is, are you ready to play? What is the game? The game is elevation. Part of what you're looking at is if I really gave my life this all, what could I do? Can you take yourself? What could I accomplish? New levels of love, a deeper shade of joy. If life is a game, then reality is a joy. So spin it. Spin it's an actual win. game that you'll be playing, but the game you'll be playing will be called your life. My life, my life, my life. My life, my life. Welcome. Tonight we are joined by 7th, 8th, and 9th graders from six local school districts, all here because they want to make positive changes in their personal lives and at the same time in their schools. Now, we all know from experience, because I'm much older than you, that it's not easy being your age, is it? No. 7th, 8th, ninth grade is a tough time. There are a lot of problems facing all of these kids, all of their peers, some of you at home watching right now. Problems that can result in some very difficult and very dangerous decisions. We asked WTEN's Elisa Streeter to give us a look at some of the serious issues these and other young people in the Capital Region are dealing with, unfortunately, each and every day. It's all too familiar a sight across the nation and even in the Capital Region. They're children and they're in trouble, like this 15-year-old girl. To my fellow teachers, I'm writing you this letter to tell you that I'm not a horrible kid or a drug dealer or anything to that nature. I know I disappointed you and I am very sorry. But her struggles are not unique. Kids are angry and acting out in a variety of ways, from destroying property to turning on one another. A disagreement between a teenage boy and girl exploded into a brawl in the halls of a local high school today. The 17-year-old who was found in the high school with a loaded gun was arraigned for criminal School administrators described the mood as somber in the high school today after learning one student was killed in an alcohol-related crash. Those are just the stories that make the headlines. Imagine the issues kids deal with every day. A freshman was drinking water at the water fountain, and a sophomore, who I'm not really friends with, but associate with, he, I guess, went up and stabbed him in the back. And parents can be so overwhelmed and frustrated themselves, they are often swept up in the teen's world of chaos. These are just some examples of the problems, but there are rays of hope. Kids are resilient, and with the right kind of coaching, they can be turned around. We can't give up and say they're lost. We need a solution. What can we do to make change happen right here in the Capital Region? You look good, Jordan. That looks good on TV, buddy. You know, uh, these things we see on the news sometimes are scary, and you sort of look at them and go, well, that's just an isolated incident. It's, you know, it's just a news story. That's not what it's really like in high school. But, Shante, it is pretty much what it's like sometimes, isn't it? Well, back in November, we had a boy call into our school and say that he was going to shoot anybody who walked outside. So they called the SWAT team, and they came to our school, and we were locked down for three hours. How would that make you feel? I was scared and afraid that I wouldn't see another day. Yeah, that's something you shouldn't have to face when you're in 8th or ninth grade. But that's a little dramatic. It's not always as dramatic as that, but there are other problems, aren't there? Like, little fights happen because somebody said something about somebody. And you can't back down because everybody's around you and there's pressure, right? Exactly. All right, well, identifying the problem is only half the battle. The good news is for every story like that that you see on the news, there's 20 kids like this who are willing to make a difference. And I applaud you all. Give yourselves a round of applause for showing up and doing this. You know, it calls for a solution, but it's going to take progressive solutions to really make a difference here. WTEN wants to be a part of the solution, and that's why recently the station assembled superintendents, principals, and teachers from schools around the area with one goal in mind, to find answers to the problems threatening our children. The solution they discovered is revolutionary. It's called The Game. A proven formula for success, The Game is a program that has produced amazing results among America's top business executives, spiritual leaders, and high-ranking government officials. And now, The Game is going to school. The man responsible for The Game, Serrano Kelly, 
and his story is just as amazing as the game itself. Serrano was born and raised in one of the toughest neighborhoods in the United States, Brownsville, New York. He entered Vassar College at age 16. He went on to become a very successful stockbroker, earning nearly a half a million dollars by the age of 24. He has since become a top coach for the best and brightest in business and government. Recently, Serrano kicked off the game at Rensselaer High School. And as we're about to see, it was a winning experience for everyone involved. 7th, 8th, and 9th graders from all around the capital region gathered at Rensselaer High School. They knew they were there to hear a speech. But what they didn't know was their life was about to change forever. I'm talking to you. And I am asking you, when you look in the mirror, do you really feel proud about you? Serrano Kelly, well-known author and creator of the game, challenged and inspired these kids in ways no one ever had. Game. Part of what you're looking at is if I really gave my life this all, what could I do? What could I accomplish? This wasn't just a speech, it was an experience. And what is my purpose? Why do I go to the inner cities of Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Dallas? Why am I going to Israel? Why am I looking to organize games between Israeli kids and Palestinian kids? Why? Because my purpose is to give every human being full access to their full potential, whether you're interested or not. At least with me, you get a choice. And you will have to choose. But it won't be because you don't know. It will not be because you don't know. Over the next 45 days, I give you a real challenge. I give you 45 days in which to answer the question, why am I here? No, not because my parents sent me to school. Why am I here? What is my life about? Now, let's meet the man behind that powerful message you just saw delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Serrano Kelly. Serrano! Oh, now you're smiling. When I saw you on the tape, you're yelling at these kids in their high school. What's up with that? Oh, uh, that's the, that, they, they know I was just messing around. I was just playing with them. That's just all. Playing. But yeah. you guys obviously stepped up to the challenge, right? Mm, he, he didn't scare yeah. you too badly. No. Serrano, I'm so glad that you're here, and these kids are fantastic. And absolutely uh, incredible. Yeah. But what I, I I just keep thinking about people who are watching this for the first time and just figuring this out. So mm. tell me if you can, what is the game? Imagine if you had only 45 days to live. Think about all the things that you would do, all the people you would connect with, all the things you stopped procrastinating. Well, what if we created your life as a game? And there was a way to keep score, and there were players, and there was a team, and there was a coach, and there was a finish line. Like in 45 days, you know whether or not you won that game. So you're basically just saying step it up like it matters. Take your entire game of life to a whole nother level that usually without some sort of deadline, people tend not to do. We'll do it tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Now, I know that uh, in the corporate world, you've had major success, but that makes sense to me because if it's about money and adults, they're motivated to get there. Sure. Has the game worked with students before? Well, let me just give you an example. You know, even adults walk around complaining and whining with sure. excuses. Sure. I had this kid walk up to me and hand me a medal and say, you know, Mr. Kelly, I won this medal because I led my school to the lacrosse championship. Where was this? Uh, this was in the inner city of Baltimore, you know, a very heroin-infected area of that particular city. Got it. Yeah. I didn't even think they had lacrosse in inner city. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I was like, wow, that's really great. And then he walked off. A teacher walks up to me and says, you know, what's remarkable is that midway through the game, he and his mom got kicked out of their house. They're homeless. So he was living on the street, mm -hmm. not only showing up for school, but showing up for lacrosse and led his team as the captain to the championships. So somewhere in the game, he learned that excuses just don't count. You know, when you see someone perform like that, what kind of excuse can you really get? There are no excuses. You guys ready to step up like that? Yeah. Oh, come on. You can handle <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, they're ready. They're ready. Absolutely. I just was checking to see if they're paying attention, right. but they're with you. Are so you guys ready to step up like that? Yeah. I think they can handle it. I know they can handle it. I'm excited yeah. about it. You know, one of the ways the game works is to create positive peer pressure. You know, that's not usually the way peer pressure works in real life. I mean, as parents and teachers, we do the best we can to shape the lives of young people, our children. But the desire to be one of the cool kids also plays a major role in the paths our children choose. Let's hear what our students had to say about the price some kids are willing to pay to be in the in crowd. Pressure is that kids don't just don't really care. They just do it 
they drink and do drugs just so they just feel like it and because kids are telling them to and they like if the cooler kids are telling them to do that then maybe if they do it they'll be one of the cooler kids when there's like a, a big crowd of people because the kids want like if a, something happened and then the kid feels disrespected instead of just walking away which he would have probably did if there was only like him and him not the person but now that there's a whole bunch of people talking to him peer pressure and everything I guess the kids react differently when there's more people around so I would say people change that sometimes it's a lot like like, like, like saying saying like asking somebody to cut class or something and you, and you say no I'm going to go to class and Maybe one of your friends would say, well, we're all doing that, so it's all right. Or, or they try to get you into it by calling you a punk or just calling you bad names to make you just go, whatever, I'll do it. Tell you the truth, for me, it's kind of tough because of all the prayer pressure. Like, some kids try to get you to smoke cigarettes or smoke weed, stuff like that, and that's how it's hard. Like, all the prayer pressure that's going around, and like, it's just hard to be like a kid sometimes. Peer pressure is everywhere, but uh, what kind of stuff have you run up against, Erica? Everyone just wants you to drink and go to parties just to get wasted, make you seem like you're cool. What if you say no? Then they just like, well, whatever, you're not cool. Is that something you've run into too, Darrell? Yeah, sometimes, but you know, you just gotta say no and stick to it. Which is not easy to do. Nah, not all the time, but you know. So, gotta... so peer pressure is everywhere, but, but in the game, Serrano, you say that peer pressure can be a positive thing. How do you make peer pressure positive? Well, in this one school, there are these girls who came up to me, and I knew they were some of the tough ones in the crowd. And they had already been playing the game for the 45 days, and they said to me, you know, we formed a new girl gang. I'm thinking, this does not look good on my resume. Suddenly, this yeah, game this, is going this hardly not, This is not looking good at all. Yeah. And they go, well, the gang is called girl o -Rama, and what we do is we go around the school and introduce kids to each other so there's more of a sense of family. So, Serrano, how does the game make peer pressure a positive thing? Well, when you play the game, you have a weekly coaching call and you have a daily partner call. And you're accountable to your partner. And if your partner doesn't win, you can't win. You lose if your partner loses. And, like, take an example. Like, let's say that Jordan and I say that we're going to get up early and go running. Well, if he told himself that, he might not show up. If he tells me that, and I, you know I'm going to show up, is there a better chance that you'll show up? Yeah. And, and you know, we might put into it like a fun consequence. Like, you know, if, if for every minute that you're late, you have to do a wall sit. You, you know, where you like lean up against the wall like you're sitting. Yeah. You, you like those, don't you? Mm -mm. No, I didn't think he did. No <laughs> one likes that those. That would be a consequence. It would be a great consequence for us. All right, very good. Justina, who's your partner? Samantha. Samantha. So you guys are going to create some positive peer pressure? Yeah. Right on. Very good. Who else has a negative peer pressure story? Brother. You do? All right, Eric, what you got? My brother has left me a reputation at the school for fighting, so whenever there's a fight that comes along, there's no chance I can back down from it. The peer pressure is, if I don't, I'm going to lose my brother's reputation and take mine with it. Just holding up your rep. I mean, if, if every kid in America heard you say that, because holding up your rep is everything, but we're going to learn that that's not everything. So, uh, you know, there's two things that often arise as a result of peer pressure, and they're fighting and anger, just like Eric was saying, and that doesn't just happen at school. Just listen to what some of the students we talked to had to say about coping with conflict at school and at home. Some people, and they, like, when they get really mad, they, like, try to start a fight or start drama or things like that. Girls are more like of a jealous type of, like, something that can happen in, like, first grade will still will hold a grudge against you through all of high school. We like never let go of stuff, really. But no one really picks on me because I'm one of the bigger kids.